All right, so what we're going to look at in this video is another dynamic programming problem. It is called egg drop. And this is another pretty, uh, I wouldn't say famous, but well-known dynamic programming problem. And just to get this out of the way, yeah, I know this was the same sweater I had in the last video. I'm in the same basement and uh, yeah. All right, so this problem asks us, given a certain amount of floors, and given a certain amount of eggs, what is the least amount of egg drops, the least amount of egg drops that I need to perform to find the pivotal floor where right below it, if I drop the egg, it won't break, and right above it, if I drop the egg, it will break. We're looking for that pivotal floor. So for example, if I'm at three, if I drop it, it doesn't break. But as soon as I hop up to four, if I drop it and it breaks, I know my pivotal floor is three. That is the floor where if I go up even one higher, my egg is gonna break if I drop it. And so the key is we have a limited amount of eggs and we want to minimize the amount of eggs we use. That is the whole point of this problem. So our job is not actually to find that floor. Our, our job is to Tell me, tell the caller, if I give you a certain amount of floors and I give you a certain amount of eggs, tell me the least amount of eggs that you will need to drop to find the pivotal floor. I, as a caller, I don't care about the floor. I care about you telling me what is the least amount of eggs that you are going to drop in the worst case to ensure, ensure that what you tell me is true. So if you tell me that the least amount of eggs you'll ever have to drop to find the pivotal floor is two, I have to be guaranteed of that. So as a programmer, what I want to do is I want to find the worst amount of eggs that I will have to drop to find a floor because that guarantees that that amount is the worst amount we'd have to drop and that guarantees that I'm going to find the floor because I'm accounting for that worst case, if that makes sense. So let's do a walkthrough, it'll make more sense. This is a very difficult problem to grasp at first. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through these simulations and we're going to define base cases. So let's define our first base case. So imagine we have one egg. What we're going to do is we're going to see if you give me six floors and one egg, what is the least amount of eggs that you're going to have to drop to find that pivotal floor? So if I have one egg, what is my strategy going to be? Well, I can't start at floor six. I can't drop from floor six. What if my egg breaks? If my egg breaks when I drop from floor six, then I'm going to have zero eggs. If you drop an egg and it breaks, you don't have that egg. You lose that egg and you no longer have any eggs to do testing on the rest of the floors. So if I drop my one egg from floor six, that's a bad thing to do because if it breaks, I don't know which of these floors are the pivotal floor. So my strategy instead is going to be, I'm going to drop from floor zero. And instead, my strategy is going to be, I'll drop one egg from floor one. If it breaks, then I know that my pivotal floor is one below me. I'm going to drop from floor two. If my egg breaks, then I know that the pivotal floor is floor one. If it doesn't break at one or two, I'll drop it from three. I still have the egg because it didn't break. If I drop it from floor three and it doesn't break, I go to floor four and then five. And then if it breaks at five, I know that the pivotal floor is floor four. So in the worst case, our floor where our egg is going to break is at the very top floor. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this sub problem down like this. So if you give me one egg and you give me any amount of floors, I don't care if you give me zero floors or give me a thousand floors, my strategy is going to be, I start from floor zero or one, whatever you choose as like a base, and then we're going to go upwards. We're gonna try every, every floor going up until our egg breaks. So what is the worst? Because remember, my caller wants a guarantee. I need to guarantee my caller that the amount I'm returning them is the least amount 
of drops I can do to guarantee I find that pivotal floor. So what we care about as a programmer is we care about finding the worst amount of drops that I have to do is going to guarantee my caller. I'm going to guarantee them that this is the worst I'd ever do and that means this is an upper bound on the amount of eggs I will ever drop. And therefore, this is the least amount to guarantee to you, caller, that this is the amount of eggs that I'm going to have to drop, at least to guarantee to you that I have an ability to find that floor you want. If I have one egg, the upper bound is going to be the amount of floors I'm given. At worst, this egg breaks up here and I will have to do this many drops. I'll have to drop it one, drop it two, three, four, five, six, drop at all the floors, and that's the worst case. So what does this equal? And this is base case number one. When we have one egg, I don't care what floors you give me, give me any amount of floors, my upper bound on the work I'm going to do is going to be the amount of floors. That's the worst amount of drops I will have to do to guarantee to my caller that I'm going to give them a guarantee of me finding that pivotal position. So this is base case number one. We have one other base case. So let's look at that right now. Okay, so now let's investigate base case number two. Our first base case related to the amount of eggs we had. Now our base case relies on the amount of floors we have. Imagine our caller does this. Okay, my caller says, here you go. Here's 100 eggs and here is one floor. What is the minimum amount of drops you can do to guarantee to me that you're going to give me the pivotal floor? So if I just have one floor, you could give me a million eggs. It does not matter. The amount of drops I'm going to have to do in the worst case is one drop. I just drop it from floor one. If it breaks, that means that is the pivotal floor. I, I can't fix. That means that is a floor where the egg breaks. The pivotal floor would be technically floor zero if that's even a true floor. So the equivalence for this is no matter how many eggs I get, if I have just one floor, the amount of drops I have to do is going to be one. It's going to be the same amount as the floors I get. So give me any amount of eggs. If I have one floor, the answer is going to be one drop. At worst, to give my caller that pivotal floor, I only need to drop one egg. That's all I have to do. My worst case is I drop one, I have an answer. So this is what we give our caller. Our caller wants this as the answer. So what if our caller asks us this? Our caller gives us 10,000 eggs. We have zero floors to drop from. This is technically base case three, or if you merge these two base cases we just looked at, base case two, if I have 10,000 eggs, give me all the eggs you want. If I have no floors to work with, what is the worst amount of drops that I have to do to guarantee my caller I can find the pivotal floor? Well, that's going to be zero drops. We can't do any drops, so it's going to be the number of floors we got, zero. So I can return to my caller, zero. And remember, this maps to this. We get 10,000 eggs, zero floors, the worst amount of drops I do to guarantee my caller is going to be zero drops. So let me re-express the base cases to you in code, pseudocode, so this can really drill in before we continue with our understandings. Okay, so the reason I'm taking it so slow is I really want you to understand the base cases. It all starts with our fundamental understandings of the base cases. So this is why I really want to drill this in. So. Again, here's what we just reviewed, or here's what we just talked about. So here are the floors. If I get one floor or zero floors, I don't care about whatever amount of eggs I get. What I return is the amount of floors. If I have one floor, I'm gonna do only one trial at worst. If I have zero floors, I'm gonna do zero trials at worst. So the eggs, if I have a total amount of eggs of one, no matter what I do, I am going to play it conservative. I'm going to go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to be conservative, going from bottom to top, and I'll keep dropping the egg, because remember, if I drop the egg and it breaks, game over. I have no more eggs to work with, and I can't guarantee my caller that I can find that pivotal floor. So we return the total amount of floors because of this conservative linear strategy we follow. 
So these are the base cases. And now that we fully understand what we're converging to, now we can see how we perform that reduction of subproblems, how we split things down into subproblems. So let's look at another example with two or three eggs. So what I always want you to think about is think about your base cases first. After you think about the base cases, think about how the subproblems reduce. Think of subproblem decomposition. After you do that, you can decompose towards your base cases. So let's see an example of this and how we do that for this problem by using three eggs and we're going to have six floors. So this is what the caller asks of us. Okay, so you see how our caller wanted the amount of minimum drops to find the pivotal floor for three eggs and six floors. So our job is to run a simulation. Our job is to act as if I drop from floor one, I drop from floor two, I drop from three, four, five, six. I'm going to act as if I'm going to drop from each of these floors and start my approach from each of these floors. We're just simulating what would happen because we want to find the worst case. We want to find the situation we put ourselves in that gives us the worst outcome because that worst outcome amount of drops is going to be the worst amount of drops we do to guarantee we find the pivotal floor, which is what our caller wants. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this down into a sub problem. We're going to look to answer this sub problem. I need to know the answers to all of these sub problems so I can see which one is the worst. And then once I know the worst one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that as the answer for this sub problem. Okay. So I need you to stay with me here because this is where it starts to get confusing. So if I drop from each of these floors, again, we're still working with this sub problem. I have three eggs in my hand and I have six floors to work with. I'm going to pretend that I start from each different floor with each amount of eggs. What were the two possibilities that I need to express? What were the two possibilities that can happen? I drop an egg and it breaks or I drop an egg and it does not break. So what does each of these entail? Again, this is going to allow us to express the answer to each of these in terms of more sub problems. So this is what it looks like. So I don't want to fill these out yet, but I just want you to see our sub problem starts here. What we do is we want to do a worst case simulation. And what we do is we try every floor with the amount of eggs. And what happens is we do more decomposition. So if I have six floors and three eggs, there are two ways that these can go. And do you see how more sub problems happen? The reason this is dynamic programming is because we're going to need to cache solutions. We might repeat work. So that's a later concern that isn't going to concern us right now, but we know we're going to be doing more sub problems. And so now this is another mental leap I need you to make. This is a hard problem and this might not all click at once, but we're going to see how these sub problems fork. So, okay. I have six floors and three eggs. If I drop an egg, what can happen? The egg can break or the egg cannot break. So what's going to happen is my total eggs will either stay the same. Notice how I just put a three for the no break for the no break. That means that my egg did not break. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a three for our, our call. We're going to keep the amount of eggs the same. None of the eggs broke, but which way do I go? Imagine I drop a floor three. My egg does not break. Where do I go? I go upwards, right? I'm going to try the floors above me. So what does the sub problem decompose into? So what we see here is we have six floors and three eggs. If I drop at the sixth floor, my egg does not break. I have three eggs and if I have three eggs and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go upwards. Well, there's nowhere to go upwards, but here is what we're going to do. We subtract six, the total floors from the amount of floors we just simulated six minus six is zero. So if I go upwards, I have zero floors to work with. 
this looks familiar, that's a base case, so we'll materialize that later. So I put this down here, again, the total floors of the subproblem we're working on minus the simulation floor, which is six. Six minus six is zero. So let's go down here, the simulation of five floors and three eggs. I drop an egg, it does not break. Where do I go? I go upwards because I need to investigate further. And what's gonna happen is five is the current floor. The total floors is six floors. Six minus five is one. So do you see that? Do you see how we're subprobleming down? Because if I try the fifth floor and I don't break, how many floors do I have left to work with? If I go up, all I have is one floor. So does that make sense? That's why we do that there. And again, this is a difficult problem. You don't have to absorb all of this right now, but just follow me through the subprobleming and eventually we'll understand this together. And then we have four floors to work with. So our egg is dropped, it does not break. So then what we do is six minus four is two. If I drop from four and I need to go up because more investigation needs to happen up, I do six minus four, two, one, two. Two floors are above four, so we put two there. Okay, so we have three floors and three eggs. My egg does not break. Six minus three, three. If I go up, I have one, two, three floors. So let's put that. And then the same thing for two, we're just finishing off if we do not break, six minus two is four. And then if we're at floor one, I drop an egg, it does not break, I go upwards. And then I'll have one, two, three, four, five floors to work with. Six minus one is five, so this becomes five. Okay, great, so we finished our no breaks, and now we understand why we branch that way, because we're doing simulations of the worst case subproblems. And remember, we're converging to the base case. We're breaking this down so we get to our base cases. I don't know the answer to this. I don't know the answer to these. I know the answer to my base cases though, and as long as I converge to them, then I'm going to get the answer I want. So what we're going to do now is investigate if we break. So if we break, what happens? So if I have six floors and three eggs, I drop it from, from floor six. How many eggs do I have left? I have two eggs. And then let's fill it out for all these other subproblems that branch towards the break. Okay, so now we see that this is two, and if I drop an egg and it breaks, I lose an egg. And which way do I go? I don't go upwards, because my egg is gonna keep breaking if I drop upward. I move one floor down. If my egg breaks at floor four, I try floor three. So what I'm gonna do is try floor three. So if I have six floors, my egg breaks, I'm gonna go down to floor five. If I have five floors and three eggs and my egg breaks, I'm going to go down to floor four. If I have four floors, I'm gonna go down to floor three. If I have three floors, I'm going to go down to floor two. If I have two floors, I go down to floor one. And if I have one floor, I go down to floor zero. And I want you to notice that what we're doing here is we're subprobleming down. And notice that these are base cases. We know the answer to zero floors. We know the answer to zero floors. We know the answer to one floor. And this is going to keep breaking down until we get to our ultimate answer. Okay, so we have our dynamic programming table. Each of these cells mean something specific. That cell right there is our original subproblem. If I have three eggs and four floors, what is the answer? That cell right there says, if I have one egg and four floors, what is my answer? If I have zero eggs and one floor, what is the answer? So what we want is right there. That is the original subproblem. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build up to that subproblem. And again, the code is in the description if I haven't said that. You can look at the code. I have a huge example, a ton of comments there. So this can be really clear for you if you check the code out, watch this, whichever helps you learn better. So what we can do here is define our base cases. So this is kind of not something I mentioned, but if we have no eggs, then I can't do any drops. So no matter what floors you give me, I'll just have zero as the answer. Okay, and if I have zero floors, how many drops can I do to guarantee an answer? Well, it's going to be zero, remember. We won't have to do any drops if I'm not given any floors. If I have just one floor, it does not matter how many eggs you give me, I'm going to be doing one drop. 
That was our first base case. So let's define that now. Okay, so if I have one egg, how many drops am I going to have to do? Remember, we upper bound to the worst amount, which is the amount of floors we're given. So this is what this looks like. So you could do that with for loops. You can do it in any order you want, as long as you have those properties. And again, the link is in the description for the code. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right here. We're going to try to solve this subproblem. So what is the answer to this subproblem? Okay, so we want the answer to that subproblem right there. And remember what I said, simulations. We want to simulate so we know the worst case at this cell. So I'll simulate dropping from one floor with two eggs, and I'll simulate dropping from two floors with two eggs. So we'll do this. Okay, it is a competition. Who is the winner? Who is going to do the worst? I need to upper bound the worst I do at the subproblem so I can guarantee my caller that I'm going to find the pivotal floor. So in order to resolve the competition, I need to do a simulation at the floor and there's two possibilities. The egg breaks or it does not break. So if it breaks, then we lose an egg and we go downwards. If it does not break, then we're going to keep an egg and we're going to go upwards. So let's do each of those simulations. Okay, so here's the simulation. If it does not break, I keep the same amount of eggs. Does not break, I keep the same amount of eggs, but I go upwards because I want to investigate upwards. I do the amount of floors that I'm testing for this cell minus the floor that I'm simulating on. So two minus the simulation floor, one. So two minus the simulation floor of two. So what does that materialize into? It turns into that. So what we have here as well is if it does break, we go downwards by one floor. So one minus one, the simulation floor minus one, simulation floor minus one, and what do they become? All right, so my camera died, so I'm just gonna finish the video here. So our original subproblem was right there, and what we did was we made a simulation. We made a simulation right, oh my God, right there, right here. And what we do is we already know the answer to those two subproblems, so they materialize. And what we want to do is we want the answer to this subproblem is going to be one plus the worst of our simulations, right? So when we take the worst of our simulations, why do we add one? The addition of the one is to signify the fact that we're going to be dropping from this subproblem. So what we did was all those simulations we did were different floors we could have dropped from. And this is because we're trying to bound the worst amount of drops, right? So we did all those simulations and we want the worst of those simulations. So what we do is we add one to the worst simulation and therefore that's going to simulate the actual drop happening. So when we simulate the actual drop happening, we're going to take the worst guy and we add one to him to simulate the actual drop and the answer to our subproblem becomes one plus the worst outcome. So that is why we add one. This, this will become more clear if you look at the code. I put a lot of comments and description there, but let's get back to Ben with the time and space for this. All right, so for the time and space complexity, we're going to have an upper bounding of total floors times total eggs subproblems. How long does it take to compute each subproblem? an upper bound of total floors. We're going to be performing some fractional work of total floors at every single subproblem. So that is the upper bound on the work we can perform at each subproblem. So what happens is we multiply these together and our overarching upper bound on the asymptotic complexity becomes total floors squared times total x. So this is the time complexity for the solution presented. So the space complexity is going to be total floors times total eggs. We're going to hold an upper bounding of this many subproblems in our, in our cache. So again, the code is in the description. If you wanna see that, I have the top down and bottom up approaches to this problem. There are more optimal solutions, but it's unlikely that you would get to them in a 45 minute interview. And I think that's kind of the point of all of this for me. It's to get the answers or set of thinking that you would actually ever use instead of learning the actual mathematical ways that are kind of a waste of time to learn because you can't memorize every problem. 
All right, so that is all for this video. If you like this video, hit the like button um, and subscribe to the channel. Again, I want to make this one of the world's largest resources for software engineering preparation and interviews because I think we need a lot more, you know, down to earth, clear explanations where things are explained as a student should learn them. So that's kind of my mission and goal with this channel and with these videos and